Hey everybody! Think we should be all live here. It is Wednesday evening. It is 8 p.m. Eastern. That is uh, New York City style time. Uh, it is uh, February 21st. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for joining me today in this Facebook uh, Live. I can see we got William here, John, Brandon. Absolutely appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, to join um, today's live stream. We got Bob. Man, nope, we are here. David here. It's absolutely awesome. So this is Wednesday evening. What means? Thank you so much for the birthday wishes, John. Appreciate it. This is absolute beginner. So. This is just you and I, um, in this, when these live streams on Wednesday evening, have any questions, throw them in the question area and I'll stop whatever I do and, uh, and we'll chat about it. Cause we've got vid here too. Absolutely awesome. Really appreciate it guys. So today, like I said, all, um, this is all about absolute beginner. Uh, nothing. We're not going to get into, uh, too much, uh, crazy stuff, but really just want to kind of like give a chance to dial back a little bit right and just like deep breath for some people where this is uh where this is is, is brand new um so today's project is gonna be um this little uh whistle here uh that we're gonna gonna draw up um so it's not gonna be uh too complicated but you know what this is a uh, i think this is a good model uh if you are fairly new or if you kind of like just need to kind of like get back into uh, into reset mode you know you're learning fusion 360 and you know you're moving ahead with 500 miles an hour sometimes it's good to just dial back see we got matthew here darren thank you so much for the birthday wishes um thank you richie so let's get into this um and again just remember any questions just throw them in the questions area and i'll try to do my best to to answer them so we're gonna model up this uh, kind of like I don't know. For me, it's a soccer referee whistle. Uh, it'll probably be black, but it looks better on red. So let me just X out of uh, of this one. Let's get rid of um, um, rid of this thing here. Vid asks, how are we gonna machine the inside of this whistle? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I would think most of these are plastic injection molded. I actually think that they are injection molded in two halves and then. Uh, then put together so you can get that little uh, ball in there. Now, as I normally do uh, with these Wednesdays live streams, this is how when you start out with um, Fusion 360. Uh, so I'm back to default. Uh, you can restore factory default in Fusion by going up, clicking your name, clicking on the preferences, and down here there is a restore to default. Now I can't click mine right now because I did it before I uh, got in here. There's a couple of things. I change uh, when I start out uh, with a clean install of Fusion uh, or whatever, like when you start out the first time. The first thing I do is I go down here. There's kind of like a grid down here. If I click on the little arrow next to it, I normally turn off snap to grid, layout, and layout grid lock. So these three here. And then I go up on this, this is called the view cube, and I right click on it and I change to perspective with auto faces. So I change that. And uh, th that's the only ones I do. Now I got a good question um, from one of you guys uh, over on the YouTube channel. That was, it's all great you're always showing this, but how do you make it stick? Well, if you shut down Fusion um, now, then it should stick. So it, it will always stick as soon as you've gone in and made uh, made those changes. See, we got Alex here. Appreciate uh, you joining Alex. Absolutely awesome. All right, so let's start modeling up uh, this whistle <laughs> that is uh, there's a project I came up with uh, today. Uh, so <clears throat> a couple of things when you're starting out Fusion. Um, you got over here, you got the origin. You can turn that on and on with, uh, with the light bulb over here by left clicking on it and you get the three uh, default views. Now, if this is the first time that you're catching one of these absolute beginner, uh, where you can just put in your questions in the, in the chat area and I will um, stop whatever I'm doing and, and, and answer them. Um, whenever you're sketching inside a fusion, you can either sketch on a face or on a plane. Now, 
and we're starting out with this 2D sketch. Now, when you start out from scratch, you don't have a face. There's nothing on the screen, but you got these planes to sketch on. So that's why we're going to sketch on first. But the rule is either face or plane. Now, in this case here, just planes. So I'm going to go up here and start a new 2D sketch. So click up here, create new sketch, and I'm going to select one of the planes. Now, there is no rule about what plane you select. I should select. I'm selecting the front view here. By the way, these represent up to where the view cube is up here. So when I say front, then you can see that's the same thing here. So I'm going to left click here and you'll see that my screen kind of like goes normal uh, to that area. And you know you're inside of a 2D sketch because we get the sketch palette uh, over here uh, to, the left, to, to, to the right side. Now I'm going to start out by creating a circle uh, for this whistle. So I'm going to hit C on my keyboard. I'm a big fan of these shortcut keys. So C for circle, and you will see that my cursor changed, and it now says next to the cursor, place center point. So what I'm going to do, you could just sketch out here, but actually a good practice is to make your first sketch tie into the origin, and that is the center right here. You can see how my cursor right here kind of like have a crosshair on it, but as soon as I hover over the origin, it gets a, uh, a square. So I'm going to left click once and drag out and then I get a, uh, a circle here. I'm going to make this one 18 millimeters. Type that in in the little box and hit enter twice. Okay, so now we get uh, one circle. I'm going to zoom in by roll my middle mouse button. I can zoom in here. You can see that uh, that, that uh, is, uh, is the one in there. Um, so Bob says a question, what are the formulas for math that I've seen you place? Um, and how do you show some of the other ones? Um, yeah, so you can do math. If I go back up and double click on, uh, on this, uh, 18 again, you, this little dialogue box here, you can actually do different kinds of, of math in here. So I could do, you know, two times nine and that will give us uh also 18 or you could you could start going in and do you know brackets um for, for something just now i'm just writing something down uh divided by and you can do this kind of stuff um the easiest place is probably going up to the knowledge space um and and searching up for what those different uh formulas are um, and the easiest place to do that is probably if you go to Google, that's Google, and you turn, you search, um, <laughs> Autodesk Knowledge Network, uh, then you get the Knowledge Network and, oh, you probably have to sign up in here. You know what, Bob, email me, man, and I'll send you over to that. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure about that. I'll type in my email address in uh, in the chat here, lars.christensen at autodesk.com, and I'll for sure make sure that I, I get you uh, um, where the different uh, formulas are. Okay, so we have our circle here uh, placed here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a line. So I'm gonna hit the line tool, now you could also hit L on your keyboard. That will do the same thing. L for line. Um, and then I'm gonna move over and you will see that when I draw my, my sketch line that it will snap into um, to the arc here. So I'm gonna make sure that it snaps into it and I'm gonna drag a, um, a line over here. Now you can see the line kind of like running along here. Now you can put in the length, you can see uh, the length kind of like running there. So if I type in 25, now if I tap, hit the tab key on my keyboard, you will see that it jumps to the angle, but also notice that where this is the 25, I'm pointing at my screen though you can't see me, <laughs> stupid. Looking next to the 25, there is a lock. So right now by hitting tab after, at 25, I have locked in uh, that length. And if I make sure that it's at zero and I left click again, then it just plays that line horizontal um, with, um, 
with uh, <laughs> Paul says thanks guys but it's not my birthday it's on Saturday happy birthday uh, Paul on Saturday mine was yesterday uh, so here is the line placed um, and it's horizontal 25 long I'm gonna hit the little green check mark there to end the line I want to show you something and you see here how my, my line tool is still active if you look at my cursor you can see I have a little line if I hit escape on my keyboard I get out of that and I get that white cursor now Notice how our circle is black, the line is blue. And some people know exactly uh, what is happening here. If I hold down the left um, mouse button and I drag, um, this line is horizontal and it's 25 uh, millimeters long, um, but it uh, it's not placed anywhere, right? Like you can still travel along that that circle next if i click here on the line we get a little symbol up here and if you ever wonder what those symbols are move over to the right over here and you can you can see what's going on now. so this is a coincident relationship between this point and this circle what will make sure that the line is is touching the circle uh the next thing i want is i want it to be tangent so i'm going to click on tangency over here in the constraint click on the line and click on the arc and now you will see that it becomes tangent it turns black and that's what we we kind of like are looking for um, David is asking about uh, the next update for fusion um, and um, I honestly I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a little bit out of uh, of the loop right now because I'm actually on parental leave I'm not supposed to work um, <laughs> but um, I can't, I can't, I cannot make these live sessions. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be March. That's what I've heard the last time, but I haven't, I haven't digged into that, David, um, when that next release is. All right. So we have kind of like locked this one in with some dimensions and these constraints, these two constraints, the horizontal for the line and, um, and the, the, the tangency over, over here that we find over here. And that's kind of like how we're going to lock it down. Paul, nothing embarrassing at all, man. It's all good. Um, so I'm going to continue with this. I'm going to go ahead and hit another uh, line up here and draw another line down. And we're going to make this one, uh, let's make it six millimeters, right? And I can just hit enter if I want to on my keyboard. And then uh, that is placed. Now, again, you see that this is blue. Um, and you can always take your mouse left and hold down your your mouse button over a point and start moving your your scats and you can see why it is uh, blue it can spin around and that gives you an idea about what to look for so in this case here this one um, is not vertical constraint so I'm going to go over to the constraint I'm going to go down here there's a vertical horizontal vertical I'm going to left click on that and click on the line and now you'll see it turn black now we got a vertical constraint, which means this cannot not move. All right, let me do one more line here uh, from this endpoint over here. Uh, let's make this one also six and uh, and tap um, and hit enter. So that one is locked down here. And you can always I always move my dimensions so it look like if they were on a two D drawing, so they're nice and, and tidy here. Um, the next uh, I want to zoom in here, roll my middle mouse button. The next thing I want to show you is one of my favorite arc tools uh, sitting over here. There's a couple of different arcs. Today we're going to use two of them. But the three-point arc is actually the favorite way I use to uh, I use arc tools. The trick about the three-point arc is uh, to know um, what order you should select the points in. Um, so uh, it's pretty easy. You select the two endpoints and then you're selecting uh, the the arc. So if I click on it and I place my first point here, on see I make it snap into that endpoint. That was point number one. Then I place the other endpoint. I'm gonna make sure that that snaps into our circle here. Left click again, and now the third point is the arc, the kind of radius of it. So just remember that uh, the two endpoints and then. Uh, then the third point is, is that one. So I'm just going to place it somewhere around here. And again, you'll see that that turns blue. Uh, again, because it has not been uh, been defined. Now, here is a, a couple of typical 
kind of issues that can happen when you're working uh, inside of a CAD system uh, that can become a little crazy. And that is, um, you know, and some of you guys have probably already tried this, where suddenly you put in a dimension or something and things start to go haywire like this. And you're like, whoa, that was nothing what I, I wanted. I'm just gonna do hold down control and Z to undo. Um, and the first constraint I always put on an arc is that tangency because that will lock that from going crazy. So I'm gonna select tangency, I'm gonna select the arc, and then I'm gonna select this line over here. And as soon as I do that, that you will see that that becomes tangent. And then I'm gonna go down and actually do it in the other end too. So this arc and this arc, make sure they get a tangent like this and that will give you uh, that kind of, of lockdown uh, with, uh, with this arc here. So make sure you always get the tangency uh, on here um, to kind of like tie things down, uh, I guess. Now, if I hit a, see how my, look at my cursor, you'll see the tangency uh, cursor is still on there. If I hit escape once, I'm back to here. Now you will of course see that this fully defined my, my circle because I have full tangency. What if I wanted to control this with an arc? You can always go up and click on one of these constraints and hit the delete key on your keyboard and it's now gone. Now that will let you do some things of course uh, to, uh, to this. Now in this case, I want it a little bit deeper than tangent. So I'm gonna leave it like this. Let me put a dimensions on it. So I'm gonna hit D for dimension, D for dimension and place a dimension right here. And uh, I'm gonna make this one, let's try 15, maybe. And that gives it a little bit of a good curve. Now you will see, and I'm just gonna zoom in here by rolling the middle mouse button. I do get a little bit of a sharp corner where those two intersect because, well, <laughs> they're not tangent anymore. Um, there is, up in the sketch tool, there is a fillet command uh, right up here. So I can click that and I can actually place a fillet between these two, the line and the arc. And you can see that kind of like the, uh, appears there. And you can make it like, you know, whatever you want. If I make it six, uh, that might make it look a little bit, uh, a little bit smoother uh, right there. Okay, so with this, you will see that we, when we have a closed in kind of uh, sketch, you will see that we kind of like get a, a, a change of color. And that means that this is a closed in sketch that we can now extrude out into uh, into to kind of 3D, uh, 3D space. So to go from the kind of sketch environment and actually make it 3D, I'm gonna hit Q for press pull. So I'm gonna hit Q on my keyboard and you will see how we're kind of like moving out here to the side. And now I can select the sections that I want to extrude. Now I'm gonna select this section and this other section here. And if I drag the little arrow, left and hold down and drag, then um, you can see that I can kind of drag this one uh, out here. Now, the plane we sketched on is sitting over here um, it can be a good practice to go over to the menu over here on the right and change this to symmetrical. So now we're making sure we get that plane uh, right um, through the center of it here. Now, of course, now I'm going uh, both uh, ways here. So that's by changing to uh, symmetrical over here. Make sure that you can choose the measurement over here to either be half or you can be the full kind of width of it here. I normally go full width and I'm gonna make this one 20 millimeters wide and just hit enter. And now hold down shift middle mouse button to rotate around. We kind of have that body right there uh, of our, our whistle. So we are good, we're on our way for the first one here. All right, um, so Brandon is asking if I have a moment to talk about the auto project geometry on active sketch plane and also auto project edges uh, under the reference in the pre, on the, on the preferences in the design. Um, yes, so let's go in here. I don't even know, remember where, 
Where are they under? Are they under the sign, maybe? Auto project edges on on references. So actually, I'll show you that one. Uh, I believe in just in a uh, in a second here uh, when we hollow uh, this one this one out here. Uh, so let's get back on this one. Um, we can talk a little bit about uh, the projecting um, on here. So there, here we have, the, this is a solid body right here, right? It's just a, like a clump uh, that we, we just kind of like modeled up here. Now a whistle is normally hollow inside. There is a tool that you need to know about. And that is the shell command. It's found underneath um, the drop down here, modify. You will found, find the shell command. I'm gonna click on that. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select on the face that I want the opening on. So if I select this face here on the side, that's why I want kind of like you to blow in, and I add a thickness, let's put one millimeter, you will now see that the whole shape of that whistle uh, got hollowed out. Excellent. Let me just hit okay to that. And let's go up to inspection, select section analysis. So that's under inspection, section analysis. And let's select the, um, plane here and you will see now how that whole thing has been hollowed out. It's a pretty cool trick. If we go back into this, you can see that we have the history line down here. If we go back into the shell, right click, hit edit feature. If we don't select anything and then, oh no, we can't even do that. Let me just hang on a second. That's only an inventor. In inventor, if you don't select anything, then you can actually hollow it out. I don't think I've ever tried that in Fusion. Inventor, if you don't select any faces, then it's just hollow, but this is fine. This is what I want. Um, so here we have the, the whistle. And, and so I selected inspection and selected section, section analysis. Um, and I wanted to go through that plane, right? That goes right through the center. And if I hit okay to that, you will actually see over to the left, we get an analysis folder showing up here. And we can see how we can kind of like cut it in half. If you hit the light bulb to turn it off, you're back to normal. So this is just, this is all appearances uh, right here. Um, it doesn't, we haven't really cut it in half. It's just all kind of uh, graphics. Um, but to go back to Brandon's question, um, in here, um, so then we can create uh, the whistle opening up at top. And I'll show you something neat about that. And I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure, Brandon, that if you go into preferences, uh, design, this auto project edges on references. Um, I'm not gonna test it. I'm gonna turn it off for a second. Apply, okay. Now, if I go in and I open up a sketch, with the section analysis on it and create on this plane. I'm going to hit a line, line tool, select the line tool. You see, I can't snap to, to anything right now because the software don't really see a section analysis. But if I just get out of this, stop this sketch. If I go back up to the preferences, go back into design, turn that back on, auto project edges on references, apply, hit okay. Now, if I go back in and start that sketch again, hit the line tool. Now you will see that Fusion sees that line, though that it's all, um, all visible. So that is what that command does that it will automatically project. And when I place my, my line for this whistle, for opening uh, for the whistle, it will actually just project those edges onto to my model. Uh, you could also, if you didn't have that turned on, you could have done it manually by hitting sketch and go down to project, to people project. You've probably maybe seen that one before. All right, I'm gonna sketch a line. So I'm gonna make sure that I sketch a line that is to the top level here, left click. 
And again, just like we talked about before, I can do the length, but I can also hit the tab key again and go over to the angle and I could type in 45. And if I hit tab again, it would lock that 45. So now I can, it'll always be in 45. I'm gonna make it snap into the bottom of our opening here. So now we have a little line there. I'm gonna do one more. So I'm still in the line tool. I'm gonna sketch another line from over here. Left click, so here's our line here. Now right now it has the length is in blue, but if I hit tab on my keyboard, it's the angle. And again, you know, we can do, um, um, we can do the angle. So in this case here, now it will be 130, 135. Hit tab key to lock it. And now that will stay like that. And we can snap that into to place there. Right, so now we, we kind of have that there. Um, and then I'm gonna give it a distance between the two. So I'm gonna hit D for dimension, look at my cursor. And uh, I'm gonna select down here and select over here. And we can give it some kind of a, a width here. Uh, maybe make it three millimeters. Um, so now we have given it that dimension, but notice it might be hard to see on the screen. Notice how it's still blue. And you're thinking, why the heck is it blue? Uh, well, that's because if I grab and hold down my left mouse button, whoops, and I drag this, you can see that I haven't locked it in length. And by the way, Brandon, notice how we now got the projected lines showing up here because we had that auto project on. So what I need is a dimension to lock uh, this in here. So I'm going to hit D for dimension, and I'm going to lock this in here with a, uh, a dimension here. So now that is kind of like locked into place. You can see how everything turned black. Uh, Philip, thank you for joining. Off subject, but how do you lock the toolbar? Because it always is in the middle of my screen when I open Fusion. <laughs> yes, that is a awesome, uh, that's a good question right there. You know what, I think I think most people have tried this, Philip. So don't feel, <laughs> don't feel you're the only one, right? You're sitting working and uh, suddenly uh, this is how things looks when you, when you open it up. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not saying that, uh, that, you know, grown, you know, grown men don't cry, but, um, it will get me, it will get me close to it when I, when I have this, right? Almost tears. All right. It's, it's super simple, but again, if you don't know, you had no chance. Notice, uh, on the, on the bar over here for this one, notice how there is two vertical lines sitting over here. If you hover over them, hold down your left mouse button, hold down your left mouse button, you can drag it around, okay? Now notice when I move upwards, slowly moving upwards up here, notice how when I get up to the top, you see that green line up here? Hope you see that, Philip. So the two vertical lines, hold down the left mouse button, move up, you see that green line? Let go of the mouse and it snaps into place. Same thing with the browser over here. You can grab up here, hold down the left mouse button. You can drag it around. You move it over to the side and suddenly a green line is gonna appear. I hope you can see it on your screen. Let go and it snaps into place, <laughs> right? If you never knew, how could you ever know? So grab up at the top, holding down your left mouse button, drag over to the side, see, see the green line, let go. And it snaps, um, snaps into, into play uh, like that. So that's how you do that. Okay, enough of this. Uh, let's uh, do some extrusion of this section here. So I'm going to hit a Q. Um, and when I do that, we move out to a side. Now, I will still have the uh, analysis tool on here. Um, so you can see we have the section view, but that doesn't matter. I can go over here with the press pull, go over here and select this section over here. And anytime I see one of these arrows, that's when I drag the arrows. Now you will see that it turns red. Hold on left, uh, hold on shift and middle mouse button. You're so welcome, Philip. Um, you will see how it's red in here. Um, and um, oh, so Greg's, Greg's gonna ask me, can I move it to another uh, monitor? You can, now you can't see it because I have it on my, my second monitor. Yes, you can place it on a, uh, on a second monitor and uh, and it will absolutely uh, update so you know you could totally have it on a 
second you can't i wish i could see my dual monitor uh yes you can i'll move back here screen line let go okay um so anytime you see red means that it's cutting into the material now i'm going to do what i did before uh, with the whistle i'm going to click over here on the menu and go symmetrical uh in here i normally switch it to whole length uh, and I'm going to go minus 15 because you see it has minus here. So I'm going to say minus 15, hit enter, and we will see that cut. But of course, we have the section analysis on there. Turn it off on the light bulb. And uh, we got our opening uh, for, for our whistle. Okay. You're so welcome, Greg. That's why I'm here, man. That's the only reason uh, that we are here on a Wednesday evening. Any questions, throw them in there. All right. The next thing I want to do here before we wrap this model up, shift middle mouse button, turn around. I want to add a, a little thing here for uh, for a, a little string to hold on to, uh, to our whistle here. Um, all right. Alex is asking, could you cut it to the side instead of dimension? Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah, so if I go in here and I right click and hit edit feature, uh, yes, you could have done that. So what did we do? There's gonna be two and a half or something. Yeah, you could do, um, we could absolutely have done have done that. So instead of go, sir, well, I don't think I can if I wanna go symmetrical. Then I cannot. If I go, I could go two sides. So if I go two sides instead of symmetrical, let's move it back here. I could have done, instead of distance, I could do to object. And I could select this face over here. Make it, hit the extent face here. And then we're gonna do an offset. I think it'll be 2.5. And then I could go over to the, the other one down here, side two would be this side over here. I could do the same thing. To object, hold shift middle mouse button. That will be to this object. You have two, you have chain faces and extend faces. And we could do 2.5 there. Yes, that should, uh, that should give us the same uh, kind of result, I believe. All right, that's cool. Good question, another way to do it. And you know what? There's no right or wrong way, I think. I think it depends on Kind of like where you are, what you're thinking with, with your design. Um, I'm definitely not a professional whistle designer. Uh, so I don't know what kind of changes you could come up with. I'm sure there could be things with vacations and things like that. Okay. Good question, Alex. Uh, let's um, design the, the, the little um, notch for, um, for the, the string in the back. So I'm going to go back and turn my analysis on. So I kind of like get this... Uh, access to my plane it makes more sense to me looking at it like this and uh, I'm going to start another sketch and I'm going to start on that plane again so you would actually see for this part here um then um I can I can just go ahead and uh, and use this plane Alex says this way you could resize the whistle and cut out will stay correct that's true yeah if you that is a good point I think if you knew that you always and this is kind of like oops Start my sketch here. If you knew that you always needed uh, that distance between here and inside of the wall, that would be two and a half. This would absolutely uh, then you had just created a parametric relationship between the two. And yes, now you make the the whistle wider. We could do that over here. If we made that one thirty, that cut will stay two and a half. Away, so absolutely, Alex. I am, uh, you know, that's kind of like um, that's a good way to kind of like thinking ahead. Love it. Okay, so um, of course, if that's what you need. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead here and turn the nails on. Open new sketch. I'm gonna start on this plane over here. Um, I want to show you a trick. If you're fairly new to to uh, modeling up here, um, and I do this a lot when you when you already have something on the screen. When you start modeling things up, sometimes it's actually easier to model a little bit out away from the part and then tie it in later on um, to, to, to the model. 
So if I go up here to a two point rectangle, I'm just going to place a two point rectangle over here. And I just click, click, see how it's blue, got the vertical and horizontal relationship. Now I'm going to give it some dimensions. I'm going to hit D for dimension. I'm going to make this one five. And I know that I want to make this one three. Okay. So hit escape to get out of the dimensioning tool. So if I grab a point here and start moving around, you can see that this is blue, though that we have the dimensions and relationship because it's not locked down. But now I could go and I could create a relationship or constraint between this sketch and our whistle body. So coincident, click on coincident, select this corner and this arc, and that will be now coincident. I'm gonna move out of there, grab my point. So now you can see that that point is, uh, is coincident. If I hit another coincident and select the other bottom corner to that edge, now it becomes black. It is, uh, it is fully constrained. Sometimes I find that a lot easier to do it this way um, when, when you're working, uh, working with it. Bob is asking, where's the P? Getting to that, we're getting to the P. <laughs> um, so now I wanna show you an another arc. So I talked about before, sketch arc, three point arc. There is also uh, a tangent arc. And you know, if you're new to fusion, I don't blame you for, I mean, I think everybody in the beginning can be a little overwhelmed with all these different drop downs. But I think it's important to know that these different ones are in there and maybe experiment with them from time to time. So if I select tangent arc, and I snap into this corner, you can see how I can create a tangent arc very easily, and that tangency uh, was placed in there. So you could have said that for our first one over here, tangent arc could have been, could have been an option. Okay, now with this, I'm gonna place another circle in the center here. So it's kinda of like the outer body. So I'm gonna hit C for circle, that was the first command we did. Let me start out with this whistle. And notice when I hover over here, um, we can snap into that uh, point right there. That's actually the center of our arc. So I'm gonna left click and uh, we, can, we can sketch a circle here. I'm actually gonna type in three millimeters and uh, hit enter. And now we kind of got that here. That's all we need to do um, this little bracket. And notice that our rectangle is in a section, is intersecting with the body of the whistle, what means that this is all gonna be one part right now. So I'm gonna hit Q for press pull, and make sure again that you select the sections that you want. So you can see I have to select two selections because I have that line going through there. I always grab an arrow whenever I see it because uh, it kind of like gives you an idea about what uh, what you're working on. Now we can't, if I drag it this way, you can't see anything because we have this analysis tool on. But I'm gonna go over again, and I, as I did before, and use symmetry because I know it's gotta go uh, both ways. And I'm gonna make this uh, three uh, millimeters thick. So I hit enter. And as soon as I turn the analysis tool off, then um, shift middle mouse button, spin it around. We can kind of see that we have that little uh, that little string there, okay? Um, now, at this point, um, again, if you have any questions as we're working through here, just gonna make sure that I'm not missing any. If you have any questions as we're going through here, the, the, the Facebook live streams, throw them in the chat. I'll try to, to answer them if I go along. At this point, before we do the P, um, I wanted to show we t the fill it command. Now, earlier, we place the fillet inside of that transition in the sketch environment between, let's click up on the front view. So now it's hard to see because it's smooth. We have a little fillet in there and we did that uh, with the sketch fillet sitting right in here. But we can also, let me just turn this section view off by clicking the light bulb for analysis. Uh, we can also add fillers to the model so that's sitting right down here under modify, fill it. And there's a little like a round edge. So I can actually go around here and I can select uh, the different edges of the model that I kind of want. And you can see I can select actually through 
the model, which is kind of handy. Uh, so now I could select all different kinds of edges. The back side of the, whoops, the back side of the hole, this edge, and let's select that inside edge too. Um, and we can now add, you know, some kind of a, uh, a little fillet in here. You can 0.25 maybe. I uh, will give you all the edges uh, kind of broken uh, in here. Uh, you can, of course, also, sometimes you've seen me in other models where I'm actually breaking it down into to multiple uh, fillets. I should probably also add a fillet up on there. Right click, hit edit. Um, the, one of the things up here is that I should probably have had that fillet down there. So sometimes what I would do when I'm doing a model is I would actually break the fillets into different sections. So maybe do this one as one fillet here, make that 0.2, um, and then do another fillet for the rest of the model because that can give you an option to maybe adjust um, different fillets. Uh, so when the customer comes and says, you know, we we want another fillet type, so let's make this one 0.3 maybe, make it a little bit fatter. So now I have two fillets and I can now uh, kind of uh, adjust them separately uh, down here, one for the outer and then maybe for the little hook there. Another thing I wanted to show, um, some people have asked me about what is the difference between a fillet and a chamfer. Well, the chamfer is a 45 degree broken edge where a fillet is actually rounded. And normally we add fillers on the outside of parts, but we actually add chamfers uh, on the inside. Could be easier to go in with like a little file or, or something different uh, like that. But does kind of like the same, same idea. Uh, we can add a little fillet in there just to break, break the edge. Okay, last thing here, uh, before that, um, oh, Alex has a question. Is there an advantage of sketching on analysis plane instead of just projecting on XY plane, um, which is also in the middle? That's actually, um, that is actually the, um, what I did. I mean, when I, when I click this section analysis, I'm actually not sketching on that face. I'm sketching on that plane. I just use the section analysis to, to get in so I can see better. Um, but I was actually sketching everything on on that uh, that plane right there. Hope that answers that. Uh, Bob is asking what the fillet rule is. I'm not sure if you're referring to what I just, my comment about I broke the fillets up into different sections. That was what I was talking about, Bob. I don't think I said anything about there was a rule. Uh, I said that fill is normally on the outside of the pot. Many times internally, uh, you will put, I have at least designed with chamfers on the inside because it can be harder to fit uh, fillets on the inside of a pot. Uh, so that was not a, that was not a fill rule. That was just, that was just Lars doing a comment. So I broke them down into two different, so sometimes I would break my fill it down into different operations because when you go to a customer, the customer says, you know, well, change the outside fillet by so much, but you can't change the other fillet. So I sometimes breaks it down. And then the other thing I said was that fillets, at least when I design parts, I would normally use fillets on the outside of parts uh, and chamfers on the in internal, right? Like if you had to work on this, if you had to make this, um, then in plastic injection mold, then I think that that's most common. That's how you, you, you do it. Okay, last thing here I wanted to do, and this is just pure, so here we have the whistle, this is all good. Uh, but um, Bob was making a comment about, can we get the, the P inside of it here? And of course we can. Uh, just for a reference, uh, nothing for anything uh, specific. I thought we do want a P in, in, the, in the whistle here. Uh, so I'm gonna go back and turn my analysis tool back on here and start another sketch on the plane here. And just like I did before, I'm gonna sketch this one outside, just so you can see it. So, um, so click L for, for, uh, for, for, for line. Oh, uh, I'm gonna watch out here. When you're talking about the, the fillet rule, yeah, I'm not sure. 
I, you know, I say so much stuff that I'm, I have had some, some different rules. One of the things that you might refer to that I maybe have said in a previous video, and now I gotta watch out that I'm not saying something that's gonna confuse anybody. Um, I've said in the past that, see how when we sketch up the first sketch here, let me right click and hit edit sketch. Um, I have said before that I normally prefer not to have, so this was the fill that I put in there to blend these two. I have made a comment in the past that I would I would be careful about putting fillets in a um, in a sketch, um, and I rather want them as a as a feature um, because that's one of the things that people many times uh, are making uh, are making changes to. So I, I hope that I'm not being too confusing. But here's a point: if I make a new sketch here. And now I'm going off topic, so just uh, if I go ahead here and create a sketch uh, on this face here, you know, I'm open up a new document, I'm just going to go off for a second. If I create a, uh, a sketch, just a rectangle, right, and we can make it 50 by 50, doesn't really matter. You could have an option in here where you say, well, I'm going to go ahead here and add some fillets because I know there's going to be fillets on the corners. I could go in here and add fillets to um, these corners here, right? And right now the fillet is 10, that's what it defaults to. Let's make it five, whatever you, whatever, oops, uh, whatever, whatever you want uh, in here. So let's go, so it's 10, right? If I extrude that, hit Q, extrude that out. We now have the block here with, with, with 10 radiuses on it. And that is all good. My rule in the past, and, and maybe I'm, I'm getting off topic, but I hope I, I make sense. My, my comment have been, I would rather um, create a rectangle and then add a fillet. So let me start another sketch in the same model here, but just sketch over to the side. Um, I, I would um, rather do this 50 50 extrude it out whatever length and then go in and add a fillet on the four corners make it 10. so what's the difference between these two uh the difference is that the first one is two features or two instances a sketch and a, a um, uh, and an extrusion, where the second one is a sketch, an extrusion, and then a fillet. The reason that I, I have, I would prefer the second option is many times fillet is something that people changes. Um, you know, like you go to the customer like, ah, I think that fillet is a little bit too big. Let's go in and modify it. And I've always rather wanted people to go in and edit a feature, right? Click and edit feature and change the fillet in here then have to go into my sketch that sometimes can get fairly complicated and start changing uh, the same um, result in there. So same kind of idea, but kind of like the same same end result, but two different kind of ways to, uh, to look at that. Okay, sorry. Don't save this, let's get out of this. Okay, so yeah, I hope that, that I didn't confuse anybody. Uh, but move on. Let's do the P. Open up a sketch on this plane here, and you let me know in the comment area if, if, if this is getting too confusing. So let's do the P. I'm gonna create a line, hit L for line. And I'm just gonna draw a line vertical up here, and uh, let's make the P, I don't know, maybe eight. Okay, just like that. So we're gonna make a line that is eight, and uh, then I could hit C for circle again. And notice when I hover over the, the line, notice how I suddenly get a triangle next to it. See that? That is the midpoint. So if you ever knew that, hover over a line, when you see that little triangle, that means you hit the midpoint of that line. Left click, and I'm just gonna close this circle off uh, right here. Now, you will see again that this circle is, uh, this is gonna become our P. It's just a flat circle right now. Um, 
this circle here is still blue because it's floating around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it into uh, my design in here, get a little bit closer. And then I'm going to use that tangency again. Click here and I'm going to make a tangency between the, the P and the arc here. So it kind of like lays with that. Um, and then I could go ahead and uh, for this here, we're actually going to use revolve. Anything that is round, revolve is a really good command. So I'm going to go in here and click on the create and select revolve. I have live streams on that too. So if you want that, last.christiansonerologist.com and I'll, I'll point you to those. Um, hit revolve. I'm just going to select the half moon. That's my profile. And the axis is going to be this one uh, right here. And I'm actually going to leave it as a new body uh, right here and hit OK. What that will do is that in our bodies folder, we will now have two bodies. That one body will be the whistle. The other body will be uh, the P in here. Now let me just turn the origin off and turn our analysis off by hitting the light bulb. Um, hold down the shift and now you will see that we kind of like, just for reference, this, this doesn't do anything, but now, you know, nobody can, can argue that we were missing missing uh, that there. Um, the last thing, as you people have seen me do before, is let's right click, let's go into appearances, and uh, it defaults to, uh, to steel in here. We could go to either plastic, you could also just go to paint, if you want to paint it. Plastic, doesn't really matter. Um, we're probably gonna make the ball, or the, the P, let's make that black. So I'm just gonna drag that in until the, the body number two highlights let go, so that becomes there. And uh, before I made uh, the, the, the one uh, red. Now you will see that I get a little arrow over here because I don't have this downloaded. If you click on the little arrow, it will actually download down that appearance. Because Fusion has so many appearances that the development team was like, why should we bog down every installation if people are only using a few of them? So you just click down and download it. Now I can drag that over on uh, Whistle Air and hit close. And, uh, and that there is, um, I guess, our little tutorial uh, on a, uh, a little uh, whistle here as we are coming close to, to the hour. I hope this is useful for you guys. Uh, that is really, uh, really the idea for this. Um, Alex is asking for 3D printing. Uh, it would be better to put the P on a thin leg. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I honestly, I'm not quite sure. If you were going to 3D print this one, you can also get, I think you can get some, like, oh, and then, and then maybe break it. Is that what you would do, Alex? So put it on a thin leg so you print it together. Um... And then you would just snap it off, maybe. You could stick something in through the opening and break it loose. That might not be a, a that might not be a bad little little trick uh, uh, to do to do that. All right, that was uh, what I had uh, what I had planned for uh, for this Wednesday evening here. Um, as 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 always, really appreciate. Uh, you guys taking the time out of your busy day to watch these, uh, either if you're watching the recording or if you have the time to make it into uh, to to have uh, to uh, make it into uh, to this uh, live stream here. Uh, David is asking me to uh, to cut the the thing in half. If I was going to cut this thing in half, there's a couple of different ways uh, you could go ahead about doing that. Uh, one of them, probably my preferred, I would think. Um, if you go in to uh, the modify drop down, there's a split bodies in here uh, that you could add. And that is going to be a quarter down on the timeline too. And you could go in here and say split body. And the body that I was going to select would actually probably be that, uh, that center plane there. So turn the origin back on. Select that uh, plane right there. Now, see, I can actually not select the plane. Right now, it's kind of like in the way. If you hover over where the plane is, 
you hold down your left mouse button, uh, you actually get uh, menus uh, showing up here. Right now it's looking for the body to split. That's probably why I can't do it. So I can select the body that I want to break. The splitting tool, that was what I meant. Um, with the splitting tool, it's going to be the plane. If I can't select it for the body, hold down the left mouse button, and this little menu shows up, and now I can select it uh, right there. And uh, now it will split through there with that plane. Hit OK. And now you will actually see if we go in and click here, we got three bodies now. We got one half, we got the other half, and we now got uh, the ball in, in the middle there. So yeah, so you can definitely split it. And that's a feature that sits down here. So it's not really, it's not really, I mean, if you drag it one back, we're back to where we were before, two bodies. If I drag it across here, then uh, it is split in there. So this splitting tool for splitting the bodies is definitely uh, a neat little, a neat little, little trick if you, if you want that. Awesome, cool. Any other questions, guys? Um, if not, let me just again make sure. I'll type into here Lars.Christensen at Autodesk, uh, Autodesk.com. Now I am on parental leave right now. Just to put that in the chat. I am on parental leave uh, right now, uh, so I'm not. I'm trying to keep up with my emails. But if there is any future topics you would like to see. Uh, or anything comes up, you're definitely always more than welcome to send me an email. I do my absolutely best to, uh, to answer as many uh, people as possible. That was what I had planned. I'm just gonna make sure that there's a couple more videos here, um, or a couple more comments. Yeah, you guys are so, uh, so absolutely welcome. Uh, so, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Until the next time, I hope you have an awesome, awesome night. I uh, hope that you have some fun with Fusion. Um, and um, I will be back on YouTube tomorrow doing some kind of a cam. I haven't decided what yet. And then, um, yeah, back to it. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have an awesome, awesome night. And uh, until the next time, have take care.